This is question 8 from paper 2-2 from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International Education. Up the top right of the screen you'll find a card that will bring you to a playlist of all my other solutions from this uh, exam paper. And in the description below you'll find a link to an image of this question. I recommend doing the question, spend as much time as you need before looking at my solution. All three parts of this question revolves around this, this starting equation. And to start off they ask us to show that this is equivalent, I'm sorry, this should have three lines here, sort of like equals, but equivalent. Now, um, I, we have access to graphing uh, software, because we're not in an exam right now. So what I'll do is, I'll put up on the board in a, in a few moments, an image of this equation and an image of this equation. But what you're gonna see is just one equation, one, uh, some sort of sinusoidal uh, type of wave. And that's because these are identical for every single point. So that should be on the screen uh, right now. And as you can see, there's, it looks like there's only one um, curve. But that's because both of these are identical. If you turn one of them off and one of them back on, you'll see that they're both there in the same place. Now, how do we show that this is equal to this? What we need to do is play with one side and make it look like the other. Sometimes we play with both sides to make them look identical. But in this case, this will work out just playing with one side. And usually we take the more complicated side, and that uh, I, I think this the left side would be the more complicated. Right, a few things. A lot of students have difficulty with uh, cotan here, C O T, and um, that is just the same as um, that is just the same as one over tangent, one over tangent. That's all it is. So in a lot of countries we don't even use this. We just write one over tan. And then um, remember that one of the more famous uh, equivalencies is tangent is equal to sine theta divided by cosine theta. That's how tangents defined in fact. So we can rewrite this left side like this. Three um, sine two theta, and instead of one over tan, we'll write one over this, or flip it that around, we'll get cosine theta over sine theta. Let's put in an equals here. And uh, what else can we play around with? We can play around with this sine 2 theta. This sine 2 theta, again, we're given this in an exam, we're given this in our formulas tables. This is a, an equivalency we're already aware of. You might not remember off the top of your head, but they do give it to you in exams. So don't worry too much about that. Um, I'm just rewriting the rest of this. So instead of sine 2 theta, we can write, uh, let me just double check my notes. Um, 2 times sine theta times cosine theta. This is identical to this one, so we can write them like this. And now look what's happened. Instead of having 2 theta, that was nothing else had 2 theta. Everything else was just theta. That's why I knew to get rid of that. We have a sine theta divided by a sine theta. They'll just cancel. That is fine. So what are we left with? We're actually left with, we're already finished here. We're left with 3 times 2 is 6. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared theta. We're left with the right-hand side. So that's part A. We have shown that this is equivalent to this. Now, in part B, they ask us to, to solve this equation here, that 3 sine 2 theta cotangent of theta is equal to 5. Now, the clue here is they've just used this in part A. They said this is the exact same as 6 cosine squared theta. So let's not use this, let's not solve this equation, let's solve this one here. That's going to be much easier. So if you did not know how to do part A, you're still able to do part B. Part B, you've all the information you need to try and do part B. This is, a, they only want theta between 0 and pi. So bear that in mind, that's going to change our answers a lot. So let's just try and solve this equation. We'll have cosine uh, squared theta is equal to 5 over 6. And we'll have to have a think what cosine it looks like and um, sine looks like, or sorry, and cosine on its own. So let's uh, look at cosine first. Cosine looks like this, it continues on forever. Uh, this is one up here, this is minus one. So let's have a think uh, what cosine squared would look like. So one squared would still be one, zero squared would still be zero, Minus one squared would become plus one. Zero would become zero. One would become one. And we can test out, test out other things, like a half. A uh, half somewhere like here. 
What's a half squared? Well, that'd be a quarter. So this number would be thrown up a little lower. In fact, forget this one. Let's uh, let's put them. I, I've got a different marker here. Let's put them on the same axis here. Uh, let's see, one squared would be here, zero would be here. So a half, this half number would actually appear here. Um, every number would get a little smaller, basically. Like nine over 10 squared would become 81 over 100. So it would just become a little bit smaller. So it would always be a little bit smaller. Um, I'm sorry, I should start curving around here and look something like this. Apologies. My drawing's probably not the best, but it will look something like that. Now that's important because we can't solve this, but we can solve, uh, let's see, cosine theta is equal to the square root of five over six. So we sort of need to understand what's going on because our calculator will only give us one answer. And this is actually two answers here. So uh, let's see, this would be a plus or minus here as well. Either of these would give us this equation. And we can see that over here. Let's see, cosine squared um, is equal 5 over 6. Now, the cosine squared is in red. Cosine squared theta. 5 over 6 is somewhere around here. Um, so here would be an answer. Here would be an answer. Um, let me see. We're going, only going up to pi. So we, I don't care about anything bigger. So there, there are only two answers there. So this answer and this answer. Well, this answer is going to be the same as um, this answer here. So that's um, five over six here. We'll go, it's going to give us the same, so five over six, the answer for theta here, should be the same as this number here. Um, and this number will be the square root of five over six. So that'll give us the same number. Whereas this one here, will give us the same number as this one here, which this would be minus, um, minus square root five over six. That's how we get these two answers. So actually now that I think of it, a calculator would be fine with this because each time they're only gonna give one answer. Where we're gonna get two answers is from the plus or minus. But there could have been infinite other answers. Um, five over six could give infinite answers on continuing over this way. But they've limited in this world and that conveniently, the limit in, that conveniently has worked out well for our plus or minus here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and solve this. Uh, we'll do it twice. We'll do theta is equal to the inverse of cosine of square root of 5 over 6. And we'll do it again. Theta is equal to the inverse of cosine of minus square root 5 over 6. And if we put these into a calculator, this one will come out, uh, just checking my notes here, as, um, yeah, that one would be 0 0.421. You want three significant figures, one, two, three. It says going on much longer than the calculator. And this one will come out as 2.72. And I'd like to point out, here's a mistake lots of students make. They give tr uh, three significant figures here, which is three decimal places. And three significant figures here is two decimal places. Lots of students get mixed up. Thankfully, uh, mostly students just give an extra number here, which is no harm. An examiner will not take marks away for extra numbers. Although they asked for three significant figures. Actually, they didn't ask for anything. We're just, uh, as standard in Cambridge International, we give three significant figures. Any less, you'll lose marks. Any more is okay. All right, that's part B. Let me, let me rub this out and we'll do part C. Okay, part C asks us to solve this integral here. Three sine x cotangent x over two. Now that should ring bells because this looks very similar to the equivalency we had in part one. We had a two theta here and we had a theta here, but that's equivalent because basically we had something here that was twice as big as something here. We still have that. X is twice as big as X over two. So instead of doing this sum, we can uh, go ahead and do the equivalency, which is six um, cosine squared of, of the value that was here. So that's X over two, it's X over two. Um, to DX, um, we still have these numbers here, pi over two. Apologies if I forget to write these in sometimes. I'm lazy. I often write them in at the start and I write them in at the end. I don't need to waste ink in between, but I'll try and keep them here um, when I can remember. Okay, so um, 
this is a difficult enough question, although sometimes students are given, in some countries I should say, you're giving, um, you're given a formula tables, um, for example, the country I'm from, Ireland, we'd be given a formula tables that I believe has this, I'd have to check, um, has this integral already done for you? And that's because we use the same book in school as well as college and there's no need to do it the long way each time. But I'll assume you're doing <laughs> Cambridge International since you're watching this video and you're not giving it in that. But you are given one equivalency instead of doing cosine. Instead of doing cosine um, this, you, you know something else instead. We can replace cosine squared with something else. Let me just check my notes here. Uh, cosine squared is the same as a half, um, 1 plus cosine 2 times this. Now 2 times this is just x. 2 times x over 2 is just x. So this is actually the same as this. And you'll see it comes out quite easily after that. Uh, let's, we'll multiply out all these um, constants. Well, 6 times a half is just 3. So this is the same as 3. Might as well bring the multiple of 3 outside the integral. And inside we get 1 um, plus cosine x uh, by dx. We can integrate this. I'll continue it up here. The integral is 3 stairs outside. We'll open a big bracket here. And uh, the integral of 1 is x. The integral of cosine is just a sine x. And this is still evaluated, as promised, I forgot to write these in. This is still evaluated between pi over 2 and pi over 4. So what we're left to do is simply put these numbers in. Uh, we can go ahead and do that. That's 3 multiplied by pi over 2 plus sine pi over 2. And sine pi over 2 is, I believe, 1. I'll have to uh, double check my notes here. Um sine pi over 2 we're doing. Yes, that is just 1. And then we take away, we'll still multiply by 3 though, uh, take away and we'll put in this one, that's pi over 4. And sine pi over 4 is, is plus here 1 over square root of 2. All right, so they asked for the exact answer. This is the exact answer, but we can clean it up a little bit. I guess let's leave 3 outside everything. Um, pi over 2 minus pi over 4 is pi over 4. A half, take away a quarter, you're left with a quarter. And then we have 1 uh, minus this, so uh, plus, yeah, we just leave them separate. 1 plus 1 minus 1 over square root of 2. And that is the exact answer. You could also write, uh, I guess, 3 pi over 4 plus 3 minus 3 over square root of 2. But uh, yeah, there's no cleaner way to get this. This one is natural number. This is a irrational number. And this one, sorry, this one, well, these are both irrational numbers, but they can't be combined. Yeah, that's the neatest way I believe you can write this. So when they ask for the exact answer, do not put this in the calculator. They ask for an exact answer and you're rounding off. That's, that's not the same. Exact and rounding is not the same. This is exactly correct. 100%. It, ha it has infinite digits. You'll never be able to write it in any other way than this that is exact. All right. Uh, hopefully that answers all those parts. If you have any follow-up questions for A, B, or C, please write them in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. And Thanks for watching. Have a great day.